Welcome to the Daily Word for the Season of Lent. Today's reading is from the Book of Exodus, chapter five, verse one to chapter six, verse one. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, "Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel." Let my people go, so that they may celebrate a festival to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, "Who is the Lord that I should heed him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go." Then they said, "The God of the Hebrews has revealed Himself to us." Let us go a three days' journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to the Lord our God, or He will fall upon us with pestilence or sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their work? Get to your labors. Pharaoh continued. Now they are more numerous than the people of the land, and yet you want them to stop working. That same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people, as well as their supervisors, "You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves." But you shall require of them the same quantity of bricks as they have made previously. Do not diminish it, for they are lazy. That is why they cry. Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on them, then they will labor at it and pay no attention to deceptive words. So the taskmasters and the supervisors of the people went out and said to the people, "Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get straw yourselves, wherever you can find it. But your work will not be lessened in the least." So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, "Complete your work, the same daily assignment as when you were given straw." And the supervisors of the Israelites, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten, and were asked, "Why did you not finish the required quantity of bricks yesterday and today, as you did before?" Then the Israelite supervisors came to Pharaoh and cried, "Why do you treat your servants like these? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, 'Make bricks. Look how your servants are beaten. You are unjust to your own people,' he said. 'You are lazy, lazy. This is why you say.'" Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Go now and work, for no straw shall be given you, but you shall still deliver the same number of bricks. The Israelite supervisors saw that they were in trouble when they were told, "You shall not lessen your daily number of bricks." As they left Pharaoh, they came upon Moses and Aaron. Who were waiting to meet them? They said to them, "The Lord look upon you and judge. You have brought us into bad order with Pharaoh and his officials, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us." Then Moses turned again to the Lord and said, "O Lord, why have you mistreated this people? Why did you ever send me?" Since I first came to the Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has mistreated this people, and you have done nothing at all to deliver your people. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, "Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Indeed, by a mighty hand he will let them go; by a mighty hand he will drive them out of his land." This is the word of the Lord. Place our faith in the power of the Lord. Moses and Aaron, as commanded by the Lord, went to Pharaoh to request that they lead the Israelites to the wilderness to offer sacrifice. The Pharaoh accused them of taking the laborers away from making bricks. Moses and Aaron failed in getting what they asked of the Pharaoh, and it brought on more heavier work and more suffering for the Israelites. This became an even bigger challenge for them. Pharaoh accused the Israelites of using the festival of offering sacrifice to the Lord as an excuse to be lazy and not do work. And therefore, the Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their supervisors to no longer give the people straw to make bricks with, while requiring them. The same quantity of bricks as before. This made the Israelites suffer more, and the Israelite supervisors felt that they had misplaced their trust in Moses and Aaron, who they believe have brought them into bad odor with Pharaoh and his officials, and have placed them in peril by putting a sword in Pharaoh's hand to kill them. Even Moses lost faith. Doubted what the Lord had commanded, and complained to the Lord for not delivering His people, but instead brought on more suffering upon them. All of these befuddled Moses and Aaron. But the Lord's response to Moses in Exodus six one was very clear: "Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Indeed, by a mighty hand he will let them go." By a mighty hand, he will drive them out of his land. Indeed, Moses and Aaron, the leaders, along with the supervisors and the people, lost faith in adversity and hardship. They even doubted the power and reliability of the Lord's commands. This is human nature. But what is revealed in the unreasonable Pharaoh and the Israelites who have lost faith because of their hardships? Is the Lord's power and salvation, and so, at its core, is whether there is faith in God when in face of adversity. Let us have a time of reflection. In the face of unreasonable attacks and pressures, do we trust that God is a powerful and able God to save us? Facing waves of adversity and hardships, do we have trust and confidence in God? When we work fervently for the Lord and act in accordance with the Lord's commands, do we still trust and obey without being discouraged and complaints when things are not going well? Let us pray, omnipotent and omniscient God. Your vision is never blurred, and you are full of grace and love for the world. When we are in the midst of adversity and difficulty, and our faith is weak, we can turn to you, the faithful and mighty God. So we do not set our sights on the reality at hand, but onto you, the God of a peace and works that transcend our understanding. With all our heart, we pray in the holy name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.